Hi folks, so we're going to talk a little bit about two enzymes today in this video uh, that are involved in preparing the product from the last step, ribulose 5-phosphate, and making it into uh, usable intermediates for shuffling. Uh, remember now we have finished making our NADPH, so we really just need to get these carbons back into glycolysis or into the hexose monophosphate pool so they can be used for full energy instead of just the NADPH part of them. So we need to regenerate some six carbon pieces or three carbon pieces for either glycolysis or the HMP. So we're going to talk about the two enzymes today that convert our U5P into two different sugars. The first one we're going to talk about is this enzyme, phosphopentose epimerase, which is going to take RU5P to XU5P, xylulose 5-phosphate. Um, this is a ketose, as you can see by the U, uh, and, you can, and the name is xylulose 5-phosphate. So remember the ulose in any of these names means it's a ketose, and that's going to be by the enzyme PPE, phosphopentose epimerase, and it's reversible. We also have another enzyme that does, makes the ribose 5-phosphate, and that's an isomerase. Okay. So that's going to make R5P, which is an aldose. And the difference between the ketose and the aldose here means that there's going to be a very important um, order to the reaction from the next enzymes, uh, which are transketolases. So uh, this enzyme, phosphopentose epimerase, is a cool enzyme because it either uses a zinc or an iron uh, in, this, in the core of the protein to stabilize the carbonyls of both the aspartic acid in the enzyme and the ketone in the substrate. So here we are going to be trying to flip the third position. It's ribulose 5-phosphate 3-epimerase. And that, an epimer, remember, is an inversion at one of the stereocenters in the car carbohydrate. So we need to flip this OH from right to left. Now, it's easy to do this if you have a next-door neighbor carbonyl because you can just make an enediol. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to have a 2,3 enediol intermediate. And remember, the enediols just look like this, OH on either side of a double bond. So how do we do that? Not too bad. First thing we want to do is pull a hydrogen. So that one's the basic aspartic acid. That bond electrons are going to go to the double bond C and we're going to protonate from this other glutamic acid. So pull a hydrogen here, make a double bond, this double bond here, and we're going to protonate the oxygen to make our 2,3-ene dilate. So here's our 2,3-ene dial. You can see our OH is still on the technically right side, but remember this is a planar group. So now if we want to flip that to the other side, all we have to do is put a hydrogen on this side and flip this one over to the right. So that's all we have to do here. We're going to pull the hydrogen here at the ketone because we want to keep that. We're going to make a double bond O. Our carbon-carbon double bond is going to protonate this from this hydrogen. We'll get our bond back. And because we're this is a planar bond, the alkene is planar, adding the hydrogen onto the bottom face of this is going to cause the OH to do a stereochemical inversion. So it's going to go from R on this side to S on this side. So we're going to get an epimerization of ribulose 5-phosphate to xylulose 5-phosphate. So here's our final product. Xylulose 5-phosphate has a S stereocenter at the 3 position. The OH has been switched from right to left here. So that's an epimerase. Now then, so what we just did was this. That's from PPE. Now we're going to try to make an isomer. So that's R5P isomerase. Uh, that's going from a ketose sugar to an aldose sugar. So we're going to need a 1,2-enediol. We're trying to move this double bond O from the ketone position up here onto this oxygen. Now, this next reaction is a little bit confusing, um, and it's going to go in a few steps. And so I'm going to work through it. There are going to be some complex arrow pushes, but I'll try to work through it as best I can. So here we have ribose 5-phosphate isomerase, the enzyme that switches ribose 5-phosphate to ribulose or vice versa. Uh, remember the ulose means it's the ketone and the without the ulose it's an aldose. So what we see here is one catalytic glutamic acid in the active site. That's the only thing we have to work with and it's deprotonated at no neutral pH because it's, remember pKa's for these things are about 4 
ish um, for glutamic acid side chains, 4.1. Uh, so we're trying to switch this double bond O onto this guy. So how are we going to do that? Well, pretty easy way to start. Pull off the hydrogen here. You go down. Well, we can't do that because we're going to break octet. So we need to pull a hydrogen here. So let's clear that. Let's pull this hydrogen. Alpha hydrogens, remember, are more acidic because of induction into their ketones and because they give a favorable generation of charge on the electronegative. So we're going to have our 1, 2, ene dial. Okay. Here's our 1, 2, ene dial 8. It's an ene dial 8 because it has a negative charge on it. It's an ion. So now the question is, how do we get this thing to go? How do we get this thing to become an aldose? Well, usually we would pull hydrogens. In this case, we're going to do kind of a complex thing. We're going to do we're going to pull a hydrogen using this guy, pulling the hydrogen from the other part of the ketone. That's okay, though, because it's coupled to an attack from the double bond, which is going to regenerate our carbonyl. So we're just going to invert our glutamic acid to look something like this. It's just switching the oxygen that's bound to the hydrogen here. Now, that's pretty easy, um, so we're going to end up with a nice aldose. Now the hydrogen is going to be um, added actually to the left of this molecule, it's to the top face of the planar molecule. And ribose has all the groups on the right. So ribose. And the last thing we need to do is just protonate. Take that back off and recharge our enzyme. So we should end up with ribose 5-phosphate, the aldose variety of ribulose 5-phosphate. So there we go. We've recharged our enzyme. We have our deprotonated glutamic acid. Uh-oh. What's going on here? There's a mistake. This should not be that. This should be on this side. Sorry about that. Ribose has all OH on right. So hopefully that helps. Um,